right, let's uh, let's start. And I'll just before we get going here. Yeah, just a reminder too. Um, so, a couple things. This will be on our YouTube page. So I provided a link in the chat to our YouTube page. So just copy that, uh, put it in a tab and bookmark it if you haven't already. Um, and it would mean a, a lot, obviously, to ACDC if you subscribe to that channel so that you could see all of the new videos as they come out. Um, that's big for us. But uh, all of our workshops are uploaded to the, um, to the YouTube page. So it's just probably a couple days after the workshop actually uh, happens. Uh, and then it'll be put there. As for any other questions you may have, just send me an email. Uh, so there's going to be things that I won't know the answer to, as Michael just figured out. Uh, I don't know how to catalog uh, video files. But if you have any questions in regards to those, just shoot me an email and I'll try to get to the bottom of it and figure out a specific answer to your question. Um, I often will work with the developers to find an answer. So today we're going to be talking about manage mode. So manage mode is the mode uh, that is by default, the mode that opens up when you start the product. Uh, and the reason why for this is because this is the mode by which you navigate to your files. Oh, you might have just popped in a bit later than I provided it, Steve, here it is again. Um, so, and so the purpose of manage mode is twofold. Um, the purpose of manage mode is to navigate to your files and to catalog your files. Um, and when I say navigate, I, I literally mean find the files that you're searching for. Uh, and when I say uh, catalog those files, I mean to make uh, metadata, metadata changes to those files. So in ACDC, cataloging could look like adding ratings. It could look like adding labels or keywords or categories to your files. Um, cataloging might also look like being able to navigate based on specific information that you've added to the file, whether it be ratings, labels, keywords, categories, that sort of thing. So uh, I just want to make a point that the, really the most powerful aspect of ACDC is this managed mode and the ability to sort of search quickly over a uh, you know, vast amount of photos over hard drives uh, to, to uh, bring up those images in question. Um, ACDC is a bit different than other photo uh, editing softwares. Uh, and the way that it's different is that ACDC works directly off of your hard drive instead of, um, instead of uh, working off of a, uh, like an imported uh, um, catalog of files. ACDC is working directly off of uh, that hard drive. So, and, um, in regards to that, when you make changes to your images, uh, you know whether it be to metadata or to develop your files or edit your files, uh, they're made directly on that file, and essentially it's it still exists wherever it exists on your hard drive. So let's start talking about that, and let's just sort of demystify a little bit of the um, of the UI itself to begin with. I wonder if I can get this to close. Uh, Okay, so in ACDC here, um, we're basically going to focus on a couple different panels. This panel in the center here uh, represents the preview pane. So what you'll see in this preview pane is obviously a list of uh, photos. Uh, in order to find those photos to begin with, you're going to have to navigate to a specific folder. Uh, so your folder hierarchy is on the left here, and this will be by default when you open the software, there will be a folder hierarchy here. Basically what I've done is this folder hierarchy looks identical to that of the folder hierarchy on my actual computer itself. So if I was to open up um, you know, a folder here uh, in Windows, we're going to have a look at the exact same location. As you can see here, I have this pictures folder, which I have open. I'm going to navigate to pictures. And you'll see that these folders are actually the same as the folders that are listed right here. This is what I mean when I say we're working directly off of the hard drive. So I have my O1 compositions folder, and it goes all the way down to my video projects folder. And as you can see, that that looks the same for this right here. My point is, is that 
when you're looking for your uh, your uh, images via the folder, the folder tree here, you're essentially searching directly via your hard drive. So in this folder, I've opened up a pictures uh, pictures folder here, and then uh, within it, I'm actually looking at this landscapes folder. Uh, so we know that because there's this little easy select blue icon that's located to the left, and it's also highlighted showcasing all of my landscape images in the center here. So I've navigated to one folder using ACDC, and that's great provided that you want to interact with those files. But often what people's workflow is, is they're going to import the, or rather, they're going to take the photos off of their camera or however they've taken those, they'll put it on uh, their hard drive. And, and then what we're gonna do in ACDC is actually navigate to that folder location and go through the process of actually cataloging those files so that we can bring up all of the files, uh, you know, based on certain characteristics that we're gonna attribute to those images. So I'm gonna, first and foremost, let's close a couple panes here because uh, there's more panes than we need. Uh, when I use ACDC, I primarily use folders and this catalog pane, which we're going to talk about soon. Uh, the center section here, which is the preview pane. And then I'm going to use this properties pane on the right. Um, and properties actually contains three sub uh, tabs here, which we'll also talk about. What I don't use, however, is the preview pane or the C drive pane uh, currently. Uh, some people may use preview because it gives you a little bit of information about the file. It shows you, uh, depending on uh, if it's saved within your file, the camera characteristics of it, things like ISO, f-stop, and that sort of thing, shutter speed. Uh, but all of this is info uh, available uh, for viewing also within the info palette on the properties panel here. So just to ease up the UI a little bit and to just focus on different things, I'm actually going to close this preview panel and the C drive panel. I don't use them. I don't really need it. So I'm just going to keep this open right here. Um, and that's, in this case, just my folders pane in conjunction with my, um, with my central section here, the preview pane, and then properties on the right. Uh, just as a note, one of the things to also be mindful of is that in ACDC, we have this little top function here, uh, these three little icons here, and they hide certain panel information. So I can actually hide my folder tree panel on the left here, and it's just right here. So I could hide that panel. I could hide the bottom panel here, which in this case would be a, a film strip if we had one. And then I could hide the right-hand panel, which is this properties panel here, if, I'd, if I need to. So there's some information that I can interact with to hide these elements as well. Um, but I'm not gonna utilize that right now. I just wanted to point out that you can hide elements like in this case, like that folders tree that hangs right there on the left. So, okay, there's three zones. Let's talk about those zones. So to navigate to parts of your, uh, your um, to navigate to anything on your, on your hard drive uh, or to catalog and, and to navigate to a specific catalog characteristic, that will be on this left side here. The middle will be in this preview pane here. And this is literally showcasing to you, show, showing those files. And on the properties panel here on the right is where we're going to add information to our files, things like ratings, labels, keywords, categories, et cetera. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, maybe doing something as simple as rearranging a layout as well. Uh, so in ACDC, you might want specific things. Um, and uh, you can add specific panes to your UI, your user interface by navigating to the panes folder. And you can see that all of these panes are things that we can add to our UI if we want. So a good example of the panes that we removed was this preview function, right? We had this preview up right here. Well, I can add that preview or hide that preview um, whenever I want utilizing these functions. And I can just remove it by clicking on the X on the top right-hand corner. There are other things like search and categories and keywords that we can also pop up if we want. But like I said, I tend to just stick with these panes right here. So the folders pane, the catalog, I'm not actually gonna use calendar for this so we can hide that. And then I use the properties pane in addition to the preview at the center here. So those are the things that I use. And when you go through the process of finding your own workflow that fits, you can actually save your own workspace. 
And I just wanted to take a moment to uh, show you how to do that. So like I said, I like my folders pane, I like my properties pane. I'll just go up to the workspaces section here and I can actually manage my own workspace. And this will save a UI layout that appeals to me. So all I did was click on workspaces and manage workspaces. And then I'm just going to save a workspace and I'm just gonna call this like, I don't know, Adam's workspace. And I'll hit okay and it will be saved. And so if at any point, um, you know, my UI changes for some reason, um, I can just simply go to workspaces and bring up Adam's workspace as now it's saved as somewhat of a default workspace. So I could set it at the, at the uh, factory default workspace and it'll go through the process of doing that. And it will add the preview and C drive and the properties pane on the right here. Or I can simply go back and navigate to my Adam's workspace, which will have the preview and C drive removed and just showcases the folder and the property structure here. I might close this a little bit just to make it a little bit smaller. One of the other things is um, so I can actually reduce the size of a pane. Ooh, that's not looking very good with the uh, resolution change. Hold on. Um, I'm going to just restart. I think that was a resolution issue with the 200 here. Reopen. Yeah. The classic issue of changing your resolution at the beginning of a workshop. Okay, that's looking a bit better. I'm just going to navigate once again to that folder, the landscapes folder. There we go. That fixed it. Okay. So now that we have an idea of like what we're looking at, we're looking at the preview pane, which shows us where our images are. We know that our folder hierarchy is on the left. This is where we can navigate to files. And we know that the properties pane is where we're gonna add information. So let's actually go through the process of cataloging a file and showcasing what that looks like. So in the center here, I've got all my images. Let's talk about what a catalog might look like. In this case, what, what are we gonna change? I'm just going to click on my image here, this Alpine Lake image. And what I'm going to do is now draw your attention to this right section here, this properties pane. So when I make a, um, a change uh, to this image, uh, I have a couple different options. So um, I have the tag function, the rating function, which is essentially like a star function in other softwares. Uh, we have a color label function. And then if I go to organize down to the bottom here, I have the ability to add categories, keywords, and include it as a part of a collection. And, um, and we're going to be able to add these functions and then we're going to reference all of our images uh, using the catalog function that might share those same characteristics. So let's, let's show you what I mean. Um, let's rate a bunch of images in our uh, folder here, okay? So I'm going to go through and I'm going to rate these images. So I'll start with Alpine Lake here. And I'm just going to rate it a five, for example. I can also click on my image and I can rate it using this little icon right here up at the top, just above the actual uh, thumbnail itself. And that will enable me to go through and rate these images. And I could be rating based on how much I like these images or whether or not I want to remove these images or whatever. I could be going through some sort of culling process. The point is, is that I can go through and rate these images quickly. Um, so each one of those ratings was by my man manually done. I just clicked on the image individually and then I rated it that way. But we're going to show you in momentarily a way to automate that process so that you can rate an image and then just immediately go to the next image to rate within your file. But before I do so, I just want to showcase what I mean when I'm talking about uh, bringing up a catalog of your files. So just in this folder, right, we've labeled, in this case, we've rated uh, a bunch of these images with different numbers, a rating of five, a rating of four, a rating of two, a rating of three, etc. If I actually navigate to the catalog function up at the top right here, I'm just going to hide the rest that don't pertain to what we're talking about right now, just to keep this simple. If I go to the ratings, which is on the catalog function, just at the navigation panel here on the left, right next to folders. So if I click on catalog, what I can do is I can actually search, okay, my entire hard drive 
um, four images that contain a rating. So if I click on five, for example, what you'll see is that all of those images that I labeled five pop up, these first three in the, the um, in our, our folder we recognize, but there's also a whole bunch of images in here that we don't recognize. And that's because they're cataloged from other locations on our hard drive, uh, which what I mean is they're just in different folders. So these come from different folders. What I can also do is I can search for a different value. So I could click on four, for example, to switch it up. And it's looking for every image in my hard drive that has a, a value of four. So, and to just to reiterate what we've done here, it's very simple. Uh, all we've done is na navigated to a specific folder using this folder panel. I navigated to landscapes. And in landscapes, all I did was click on an image and rate it. So I'm going to rate these things fours and fives. And then what I can do is I can go to catalog and reference fours and fives over the entire course of my hard drive using these little, I, these little buttons right here. The cool thing too is I can actually combine uh, fours and fives. So I can combine multiple uh, qualities or values at the same time. So if I click on this select button right here, this little chevron, that exists to the left of the five, what I can do is instead of swapping from each of these individual ones, so swapping between four and just fours and fives, just fives, what I could also do is click on the chevron to include it as a second criteria. So when I click on that chevron here, what happens is it brings up every image in my catalog over the course of my hard drives here that are both fours and fives. Um, so this contains everything in this case. And as you're going to see, when we start actor interacting with other things like labels and keywords, what we can do is we can actually combine specific ratings with specific labels by utilizing these chevrons on the left here. In fact, actually, we can just illustrate this right now. Uh, so if I was to want to see, um, let's unselect four. So let's go back to just fives. And you'll see that a couple of my images within this catalog, so other images on my hard drive, also have a, a blue underline, OK? What that blue underline indicates to us is that these images have been labeled with blue. They have a blue label. So I could take this uh, waterfall image right here, and I can actually label it blue. And what happens is it pops up down at the bottom here. There's this little blue indicator, which showcases to us that it's been labeled blue or labeled green or labeled red, however. But my point is, is that we can combine different criteria. So we can combine something like a rating of five, but also with a label. So if I go back over to my catalog function and I actually click on the chevron next to the blue here, not necessarily the blue itself. If I click on the blue itself, that's going to bring up every image in my hard drive that has a blue underline, in this case as a label. But if I click on blue and also five, right, by clicking on the chevron to the left here, it's going to pop up and reorganize that list. My whole point here is that when we're interacting with the catalog panel, we're searching basically every image in our hard drive versus just the image that were contained within a specific folder. From a workflow perspective, it might make sense to, um, you know, take the images off of your camera or whatever you're working with. Put them in a specific folder, um, you know, a dated folder, something like that on your on your hard drive, and then go through the process of actually cataloging those files. Um, so going through and making your ratings and your labels and that sort of thing, uh, so that when you go to reference or to to view those images to navigate to specific qualities, like for example, um, you know, like these ratings that we're talking about, these ratings of five or labels, or Alternatively, we could consider using keywords that with a certain, certain shutter speed or f-stop. And those things we could also reference within this catalog panel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate actually back to this landscapes folder. And what I want to do is I want to quickly showcase how we can turn on a, a tool called Auto Advance. Because when we were labeling, or rather, when we were rating these images, um, we had to rate them um, basically uh, one by one which is fine uh, to manually go in and enter. But if you're working with like thousands of images in a specific folder, 
you might want to speed that process up uh, than to manually have to go and click and rate. Now, that being said, what I'm talking about is when we're rating files that all have um, you know, differing qualities to them. They're different in some way. I can also rate things in bulk by actually shift clicking. So if I have a whole group of images that I want to rate as fives or whatever, right? I can click on this little icon up at the top. And when I go to rate this, it'll also rate all images that I've selected at the same time. So you can see that that five pops up uh, and is indicated uh, you know, at the top of my, uh, my layer here. I can also see that that five is highlighted in the properties panel on the right here. And I can also see that if I was to catalog uh, a five, that all those images will now pop up within this cataloging function. But like I said, what happens if I want to individually go through and rate a bunch of images because they look different to me and I might want to do it as I go through. Maybe I'm looking at a wedding photography shoot and I'm going to keep all my fives and throw out all my ones and twos or something like that. So let's turn on a function called auto advance and we'll talk about it. So I'm going to go to help, I believe, and we're going to go to options. Where is it? Tools, sorry, tools. And I'll go to options. And in manage mode, let's see what options are available to me here. Under general, I have auto advance here. So let's have a look at auto advance and turn on uh, where we need it. So auto advance is up at the top. And it just says you can use auto advance to quickly move through your images while adding tags, ratings, labels, categories, or keywords. And I can enable it auto advance mode in manage mode or view mode. View mode we won't be talking about today, but it's also something that you could turn on for view mode as well. And then we're going to turn on auto advance, so for manage mode specifically. And let's say all we want it for is tags, ratings, and labels for now, which should be fine. Uh, and I'll hit OK, but it looks like we can also add it for categories and keywords. I'm going to hit OK, and then let's see what this does. So if I go through and I rate this as a 5, and I can use my actual keyboard to do that, let's see here with a five, uh, it's going to auto advance to the next image in our field here. Now you're probably thinking, hey, Adam, this is like fine. This is great. I'm so glad that I can go through and quickly uh, rate these. But what I can't really see the image very well because uh, it's currently a thumbnail. So what happens if I want to see that image in a much better view, but also go, go through and still use this auto advance function? So what we can do is we can actually change the view mode. Uh, within manage mode to showcase a much bigger image so we can actually see it in greater detail. These thumbnails are great, especially when working in like bulk actions um, like we have been so far. But if we're actually being picky and we want to go through and, and make some quali quality changes to these images, uh, we're going to have to change the view mode. To change the view mode, I would uh, basically be in manage mode, find myself a, a folder that I want to interact with, and all I would go is to view. And instead of thumbnails, I would change it to film strip. And as you can see, this might make a bit more sense for your workflow because it's very clear. Uh, the image is very clear. I can see it in much better detail. And I'm not just interacting with a thumbnail. So again, just to showcase that, all you do is click view and change it from thumb, uh, thumbnails or film strip. And it looks like you can always so use the um, the hotkey F7 or F8 to switch between the two. So F7 to bring up film strip. Let's have a look at some questions. Um, I have three grandchildren, each in the category. One image has three in it. How can I put all into the file without go going back and forth? So you have three grandchildren in a category. Fred, do you mean like an actual ACDC category? Or do you mean, uh, what do you mean in regards to the category? A more clarification or that question, please. Um, will catalog span two or more hard drives, or is there a catalog for each hard drive? Yeah, so when you navigate to a hard uh, a hard drive, Anthony, or rather when you when you look at an image, when you browse image in a specific folder, okay, um, what's going to happen is is it starts the process of cataloging those images. And we're going to talk about this shortly. But basically, as soon as you interact with a, a folder or a hard drive, 
um, you're going to uh, you're going to start the process of cataloging a file. So people often ask a question that comes up very regularly, like what is stored in the catalog? And that's a really, really good question. Um, and I will show you what is stored in a catalog. Uh, let's go to that help function and showcase this. Uh, ACDC, I think it should just be here. Uh, let's see if I can search. Um, one second. Uh, uh let's search for to do hard uh no uh catalog so uh trying to move this tab over here oh shoot this is what happens when you change your resolution midway through uh Okay. Um, anyway, the point is you're asking is when you browse to a specific hard drive, okay, you're going to you're going to catalog certain aspects, uh, or rather, you're looking at that that folder, and you're you're browsing through it. And what happens when you browse through it is certain information is being checked, right? Is is being seen. So the ACDC database stores uh, the image, in this case, the thumbnail document and the media file information automatically when you browse your folders. So this process is called cataloging. So when I was talking earlier, like when you're browsing specific folders on, on your hard drive, that's a cataloging process. So the database, basically when you create a database, when you go through and you add these this cataloged information to your database, what happens is that it dramatically speeds up the, the ability for your computer to browse that folder because it's already seen what's, what images exist on it. It's added thumbnails, that sort of thing. And so you can then use that information that's stored within the database to sort and agon uh, sorry to sort, organize and search and filter your images. So the information that's stored uh, in the catalog, okay, are those thumbnails? So these thumbnails you see right here, right? Uh, but in addition to it, also things like categories, notes, keywords, color labels, which we talked about, authors, dates, ratings, caption, and face data. So the point is, is that it saves those thumbnails, but it also saves things like this, these metadata qualities within it. So um, and a big a proponent of what we're going to be talking about in a second is how important it is to embed metadata uh, because then it puts that metadata onto the file itself or rather it stores it within the file. Um, we'll get to that in a moment, but sorry, to answer your question, uh, will the catalog span two or more hard drives? Yes, provided that you've browsed them, right? Provided that you've looked into them, then it's going to see where those those hard drives are. The only time that this is going to be not true is if you've, um, you know, you've browsed to a hard drive, but then at some point you've disconnected your hard drive or you've removed your hard drive. Um, it'll it'll still understand, like it'll still know that what's on that uh, that hard drive, but just because you physically removed those files from uh, from the, your computer's ability to access them, it's not going to be able to see them. Uh, so the answer to your question, though, is tentatively yes. You can uh, it can span multiple hard drives. Um, what is the difference between key keywords and categories? Tom asked. Uh, functionally, there's very little difference. We'll talk about them shortly. Um, David asked, the type used in the menus is too small for some eyes. Unfortunately, David, I've already increased it quite a bit. Um, so it's already double the size that it was to begin with. Um, my apologies. Reese, is there a way to expand the number of viewable thumbnail images in this mode more than just the small, small, uh, small uh, film strip below? Uh, well, yeah, um, I think. Actually, no, you mean like double the, the height of this film strip section? Uh, I don't believe so. I think you'd have to sw swap between thumbnails and the film strip in order to see a like a, a larger amount of images. But I don't believe you have the ability to actually increase the size of the actual bottom section here itself. So sorry about that. Um, Randy asked, how do I turn off the display of MS Office documents in QuickView? It displays these files, Office 
icons is that I click through the folder? Uh, that's a great question. And you'll send me an email about that one. Um, just because I'll have to ask the developers, I'm not sure. Uh, it's possible you can remove them. Uh, Al asked, what is the best way to move a photo file from one folder to another specific folder without dragging it? Um, well, the best way to move a file folder, uh, I wouldn't drag it. I would personally take the file. So if you were working in landscapes, uh, I would. it would be best to probably cut it. So um, if you have these three images, right, and you wanted to move them from one folder to another, you could simply copy and paste, but that would result, re result in you creating two versions of the same image in, in, in two different locations. But cutting is the, gives you the ability to, um, uh, to, to sort of remove it from one place. And then as soon as you paste it uh, somewhere else, then it, uh, re it'll remove it from this first location. Uh, so you can cut it. Um, I wonder if you can also potentially just move them directly using ACDC. Uh, you can you can use the move to a folder function. So it looks like you can use this to navigate and then uh, just by right clicking on the image. Uh, and then so if there's duplicate files in the area, it'll ask you to either rename, replace them or whatever. But you can just create, you can just search for a new folder location and move them by right clicking on them and use move to folder. Um. Oh, I, I understand, Remy, what you mean in regards to you can increase the the size of the actual thumbnails itself. I think what the user was asking is whether or not they can get another row, which I don't believe you can do. Uh, but yeah, in regards to the film strip itself, you can use this little slider here to actually increase the size of those those thumbnails themselves. And this applies not only to the film strip view, but actually also, if I go to the thumbnail view, you can see that my thumbnails are quite a bit bigger right there. OK, so let's talk a little bit more about cataloging files. Because um, we just touched on it, we basically have gone through the process of rating these. Uh, but I still wanted to showcase how to use the auto advance function within uh, the film strip here. So I'm just going to go back to the film strip view, and as you can see here, I have my film strip, and I have my image. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little numpad on my keyboard on the uh, on the right hand side of my keyboard. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through and label these. As you can see, when I click on Either it be one, two, three, four, or five, it'll label those. And if I click on six, seven, eight, or nine, it'll provide a color label. So I can go through and I can uh, quickly essentially apply either a label or a color using that method. The nice thing about this, it'll auto advance to the next one, which will enable you to uh, go through and do this process really quickly, especially if you still need to pre preview or view the file as you go through. OK. so. Some of you uh, may have noticed <laughs> that as I was adding a uh, information like these ratings and labels to the file, you may notice that there's this little bin icon that appears uh, to the right of the thumbnail itself. And this bin icon is super important. So let's talk about it. There's actually a couple different icons we're going to talk about. They're just listed right here. But let's start with the bin icon because I think it's the most important. So when you save information that was that's contained within that catalog, right, that we talked about earlier, the catalog that contains categories, nodes, keywords, etc. Um, well, that information is basically uh, placed within the file. So that information is is uh, ACDC is going to use. It's placed on, uh, into the file. Um, and in this case, if I look at this one Amsterdam photo, right, and I bring up the metadata tab and I bring up the ACDC metadata tab here, um, we'll be able to see that uh, this image has a, a rating of four. Uh, it has no color label. And we know that the caption in this case is just the title of the file. It has a database date, import date, and then my name right there. Um, if I want to make sure that this information uh, is saved to the file uh, permanently, I have to do something called embedding the metadata. Uh, so again, 
metadata in this case that's contained within these is those categories and notes and keywords, et cetera. This is really important. The reason why it's really important, okay, is um, first of all, it provides a great platform to rebuild uh, or recreate a catalog in the future. So if you were to have some sort of issue with your computer and you lost your catalog or something like that, or you lost your, uh, your database, then this enables you to uh, recreate uh, that database uh, utilizing your files uh, stored information. And to be clear, this only works on ACDC uh, because the information that we're saving to these files is proprietary to ACDC, but it enables us to reconstruct it in the case if there's an accident with, accident with a database or perhaps it, the database is really old and you know, you've misplaced it or something like that, something happened. Well, as long as we have that, uh, that information embedded within our file, then we can recreate that database using uh, that, that, uh, that embed information. So this icon indicates to us that we have a pending uh, uh, metadata that needs to be embedded within the file. So how do we go about the process of embedding that, informa uh, that information so it's stored within the actual image file itself? Uh, well, in this case, what we can go, I believe we'll go to tools and then metadata, or let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yes, tools and metadata. We can go to embed ACDC metadata and will this will enable us to embed it in, in this case, I could just embed it in the selected file or I could just embed it in all files where uh, that pending flag appears. Uh, for posterity's sake, let's just embed it in all the files. Uh, so I'm gonna click that and then I'll go through and embed all the metadata. So it's gonna give me a little prompt here that says, as you organize your files, batting categories, keywords, ratings, call labels, other metadata. Uh, and ACDC face data. This organizational information is stored in ACDC's database. You have the option to embed this information in the file itself. Embedding is a safe way to back up this data, which makes it easier to relocate and share files or retrieve the, la uh, the, uh, the data later. So I uh, have 138 images that have pending metadata. Uh, I'm not gonna save any face data to them, although I could. I'm gonna save just metadata, including categories, keywords, ratings, color labels, and other metadata. And I'll just click embed, and it'll go through and it'll embed all that information into the file. And so what you may notice is that pending metadata flag has now disappeared. Uh, so that pending metadata flag that was in the bottom left-hand corner is gone, and that information is embedded now within our file permanently. Um, so provided you have access to this image file in of itself, you can recreate uh, that uh, that database using that that file. So um, if I add a color label to this file, you'll see that that pending metadata uh, icon will pop up again because there's new information that could be stored to the file. But let's right click on our image here. Or actually, let's go to tools and database and go to catalog files. And I'll just showcase really quickly how you could go through the process of recreating this, uh, that database provided that you've lost it. So when you go down to, uh, you go to tools, database and catalog files. If we catalog files in a specific folder, what we can do is we can take that ACDC metadata, including categories, keywords, tagged and collections, that sort of thing. Uh, also face data. Um, what we can do is we can recreate that and then add it to a new data database since we've lost our old one. Uh, so this will enable us to recreate, especially important when it comes to categories and keywords, which can take a lot of time to put together, right? Um, so we would be able to uh, recreate that based on any information that we've saved within our file, like these values here. So my point is, is that embedding metadata is really important uh, and it'll give you the ability to reconstruct if things, if go, if things go badly. You'll also get a note uh, upon you know exiting the software to embed your metadata as you move in and out of uh, of working in ACDC. So that's by default turned on. Okay, I'm just going to move this file to the center here. Let's talk about the other icons that appear in our our file here. So there's a couple other icons that appear in the bottom left. We'll talk about them. We know about the pending metadata, which is this little uh, looks like a three tires stacked uh, stacked on top of one another. But there's also this little developed icon. 
So this developed icon on the bottom left indicates to us that an image has had development changes made to it. Uh, and what that means is if we take this, uh, actually let's take this Alpine Railroad example again. We're gonna open this. I'm gonna open it in develop mode. And because we're not focusing too much on develop mode, I'm just gonna make a really quick adjustment to this image. So let's say, let's make a, uh, you know, a white balance adjustment. Let's cool, it, cool our image off. And if I navigate away back to manage mode, I'll save the changes to this image. There'll be a little developed icon that it pops up on the left. All this indicates to us is that some development changes have happened on this image. Okay, it's all it is saying. Um, and it just, it's important to note too, because if we made development changes to an image and we wanna use those for the purpose of batch developing other images, this gives us a good example of which images have already been developed. Again, uh, we'll talk about batch developing shortly. The next icon is and indicates that categories have been added to this image. So if we look at this JPEG here, there's this little category tab, which pops up to the right of the developed uh, icon. And actually, if I take uh, this image and I go down to the organize panel down at the bottom right here, if I look at categories, you can see that uh, that this has a little animal category tag, tag to it. Uh, not very descriptive of the image, but the point is that it has some sort of category applied to it. Um, I'm gonna take a little pause uh, because we should talk about categories and keywords now that we're in this area. I'll talk about this last icon afterwards, but first let's talk about categories and keywords. So all this icon shows us is that we have saved a category or keyword to this image. So I'm gonna click on new image, this Amsterdam image here, it has no pending metadata and it has no categories or keywords applied to it yet. Um, so a category or keyword, and like I said, they're very similar, okay? Um, ACDC has categories and keywords and and if you're if you've never used them before you're new to using them they might appear very similar um, the the combination of the two allows you to create these sort of hierarchies so something can have a category and a keyword um, and that those categories can be different um, you know in an example I had earlier I created a bunch of different uh, birds in a previous uh, a workshop so I created the category animal and then I created a subcategory of birds and then within the keyword I have a whole bunch of different bird categories that I've added um, let's see here uh, if I open that category, I have like eagle, flamingo, heron, owl, sparrow, swan, and there's a hierarchy here, which means that one keyword uh, is at the top and the other keywords are at the bottom. So let's let's recreate a new keyword and category for this image so I can showcase what I mean. Um, so I can click on this image right here. Uh, and all I need, need to do is I can actually just, let's see here, I can cl click in this category section right here and we'll add a new ca uh, category just by right clicking. So I can create a new category. Let's create a new category and called it, I don't know, building um, is my new category. In this mode, after right clicking, you'll see that there's two options that pop up. The create a new top level category. And then there's also a uh, pop-up that's underneath of it that allows us to create a subcategory. So if I create, uh, actually let's create a top level category, which might be city uh, and I'll hit okay. And you can see that city pops up on the category panel. I can apply this category by clicking city here. And you can see that the category icon appears as well as the pending net metadata flag. I can right click on city and click on new category. And this time, this gives me the ability to create a new top level category or a subcategory within city. So let's create a new subcategory within city and we'll just call it building right there. And then, so that one is applied. I can see that underneath here and I can click it to apply both building and city. Um, so now if we look at our image here, you can see that it is applied. It has two of these, uh, these categories applied and we can now reference these categories within the catalog window. So if I navigate to the left here on catalog, you can see that if I pop open 
categories, I can actually click city and it'll bring open that one image that I just cataloged. And I can hit this plus button to the left of it to actually uh, use this building function to be further specify. So I can have a couple of images that have city, uh, but they might not have the category of building. Let's navigate back to that folder and we'll look, add a couple more city images. So let's say this is a city image. It's, uh, I don't know, sure it's a building as well. Oops, click on building. Let's click a couple different images that look like they're in the city. These are the city, but they're not buildings. This is a city image, but it's clearly on the street. And I don't know, I'll add two more just for sake as well. Maybe I'll add this one to both categories. So I've added a couple categories to some images within my folder and we'll navigate back to the catalog panel. And now we can see that those images that are labeled city, which was everything, right, can be viewable, but my buildings are different. I can also see that one of my building has a blue label, right? So if I go down to the labels section here and I click on green, I can combine those two qualities. So this category and this label, this green label, to bring open my canal image, which is right here. Uh, I also noticed while I was in the uh, city uh, or the building tab here, what I can also do is I can click on a rating and that rating in this case can be four. And you can see that my Amsterdam image pops up. Let's see what happens when I click on green as well. I think what should happen is there'll be no images that are both that are all buildings, uh, ratings of four and also green. So it'll indicate to me that this uh, those clauses are empty and therefore there's no uh, those those values are not assigned to any any images. So that applies to an image in this case, which has a category, a subcategory, uh, but we can also add a keyword, right? We can add a new keyword to this image as well. So we'll go to the keyword section, and what we can do is I can go in and add a new keyword. Um, so I can go in and add a new keyword to here. Uh, so I'll add a new top level keyword and that top level keyword could be, uh, I don't know, um, this looks like uh, older architecture. So, so I'll just do that, old architecture and hit okay. And uh, it'll pop up in alphabetical order right here. If you wanna create a set of keywords and this also applies to categories, um, in this case, I have a, a current keyword set, right? Because I can just create one individual one like I did right here, this old architecture keyword. But what I can also do is I can create a whole set of them uh, that I can reference for specific images. Uh, maybe I was working in wedding photography and like I said, I wanted to do a whole bunch of keywords that applied to two weddings like bride, groom, or specific names of people like in your family or whatever. Right. I believe this was a question from earlier from uh, uh, from Fred. If you had, you can add a bunch of different um, uh, people or, or, or keywords uh, within a uh, the the keyword panel here, uh, all within the same panel. So you can just quickly click and add them. So let's create our own keyword set. Uh, so in order to do this, I'm just going to go down to the keyword section here and uh, let's just add a new quick keyword set by clicking on the little drop down here. And this literally opens up this little row function, which allows me to add a whole bunch of different uh, different keywords. Um, so within this, we could add a keyword like, um, so we've already talked about city building. We haven't talked really too much about qualities. So, um, so we could add daytime is one quality. We could add brown for the color of the buildings. We could add, um, you know, a specific city we were in. For example, I don't know, we could add like Zurich or uh, maybe we were in Lisbon or maybe we were in, um, you know, uh, it doesn't matter here, let's go London. Um, but we can add a couple different subcategories within this. Uh, we could add other colors, for example, or we could add other attributes. Um, we could add like, I don't know, window or, uh, you know, or um, shopping or uh, um, a commercial, that sort of thing. And so when I go to add this, uh, I can hit OK and it's gonna ask me to name this preset. And we'll just call this preset, I don't know, building, cause that's within the category that we were working with earlier and hit okay. And then 
first and foremost, it brings it up in this quick keyword panel here. Uh, so you can see it added right there. It's under building. And then I can just quickly add all these keywords oops, uh, to my image. And as you can see, as I add them, they'll light up there. And you can see that the keywords are going to be not only listed here uh, under the keyword panel, uh, and also they're going to also be listed here under the keyword section, the single keyword list itself. Uh, but they're also going to be visible uh, right here under the uh, metadata tab where it says ACDC metadata. Things like Brown, Commercial, Daytime, Lisbon, London, Old Architecture, Shopping, Window, and Zurich. Now, one thing I should note that is actually different between categories and keywords is keywords, uh, sorry, rather categories are not contained within this little uh, section here. Um, they're only contained uh, within, uh, within the file itself. Uh, they're sort of like an ACDC proprietary thing. But keywords, uh, keywords are really useful because um, these keywords are going to be visible to anyone using ACDC because uh, there's uh, something that ACDC uses to showcase. In this case, it's part of ACDC's own metadata. So if we were to save this image, uh, embed this metadata, and send it to a friend, uh, so we send it to our friend who also had ACDC, they will be able to see all of these keywords that we've uh, put in here under the ACDC metadata tab. Um, now, ACDC metadata, like I said, is only visible to somebody using ACDC. But what happens if I want to take this information and I want to move it to like the actual keyword panel itself that exists under IPTC? Um, so this image itself has a whole bunch of keywords that are uh, added. Let's see if I can find that image that has no keywords. Perfect. Uh, so let's just add, a, uh, so this, this blue image has no keywords whatsoever. I'm just going to go to this organize panel and I'll add a bunch of keywords here uh, from my uh, quick keyword pane. And I'll go back to metadata here. And I'll look at the ACDC metadata and now it has the same keywords. Great. So if I wanted to take those same keywords, but I wanted to uh, actually like embed them within the file under the IPTC column. So this IPTC would be visible to anyone regardless of whether or not they had ACDC or not. Um, so we can take those keywords, right? We can take these keywords here and we can literally move them directly to the IPTC column under keyword, or sorry, the EXIF, is it? Or is it that lists the keywords? Oh yeah, it's right here. I can take those and, and fill this section up itself. Uh, and to do that, uh, what I could do is I could add the keywords individually using this little right-click panel here. And this includes all of the keywords that uh, we added, uh, you know, uh, including all of the ACDC keywords. Or I could just populate this list uh, using this little preset that we can create here. So I can take these ACDC metadata keywords and move them directly into the IPTC keyword field. And I could do that by managing my presets. And this is quite simple. All I would do is go to the keyword section under IPTC content, right? Right here where it says keywords. And I would go, okay, I want to insert metadata in that field. And the metadata that I want to add is ACDC metadata and it's ACDC keywords. And I'll hit okay. And then what I could do is save this preset. So we'll save this piece preset as custom preset and hit okay. And now, uh, yeah, let's save it. And now we have this little blue indicator right here that we could fill. We could fill that information by just click clicking apply. And so now the keywords match in the IPTC column, match the keywords that we have in ACDC, which again, these are proprietary to ACDC, uh, ACDC viewable to any user who has ACDC these uh, would be viewable to anyone looking at your file that you could send. So this would be a fast way to save any work that you've made on your ACDC keywords directly to the, um, directly to your file. Um, let's have a look at some more questions here. Uh, Alan asks, sounds like the number rating helps people to decide which pictures to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, this is something that, I mean, you can, there's no one workflow that's gonna be, uh, 
that's going to work for everybody. But uh, lots of people will cull their images based on ratings that they've given. This is especially true as if you're working with hundreds or even thousands of images from a single shoot. You might get th go through and all of your images that are rated five are the ones that you're absolutely going to keep. And the ones that you've rated like, I don't know, three or lower are the ones that you're going to cull. And then maybe you'd go through and do a secondary pass and cull even more. But the point is, is you can use ratings uh, and things like the auto advance function, in addition to that film strip view that we were showing earlier to quickly go through and cull, um, cull those images. Another cool thing that I didn't show, but I should show now is in relation to cataloging, right? So previously uh, we showed you how to catalog images that uh, say we went in and we looked at all fives. Well, these are fives from every single folder on my, um, my hard drive. What happens if I just want to view uh, fives that are within this folder, this specific folder? Well, earlier I showed you how to swap between the film strip and thumbnails portion. We can also use this to filter ratings. So if I'm looking within this folder and I want to filter, let's filter just ratings of three. Well, these are the images of ratings of three. So while I'm in here, while I'm in this folder, I could literally go, well, I know that I'm not going to keep my rating of three images. So let's just go through and delete these. I could filter all my ratings of four. Maybe I want to keep these or I wanted to go through again. I can rate my images with five. I could keep these or I could move them. But the point is, is that you can use this filter panel up at the top here to actually uh, view the images with or that have those specific ratings or labels or categories, no keywords, that sort of thing, tagged, untagged. We could view these values uh, just within that folder using this filter function versus using the catalog function, which views everything on all your hard drives. Uh, so Alan, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, it depends, but yeah, people use it to call for sure. Stanford asked, is the catalog in some uh, universal format, i.e. can catalogs metadata be moved from to other softwares from other manufacturers? Yeah, so this was an earlier question and sorry, I didn't have an answer for you then, uh, Stan Stanford. But when we talked about moving that ACDC metadata to the IPTC column uh, in the above example, let's just go back to that image here. So this image, these keywords are going to be viewable no matter what. And I'll show you where these keywords live, actually. It's kind of interesting. So these keywords under the IPTC field are located here. So I'm going to navigate to the exact same photo, the balloons image, which is in landscapes here. Balloons. OK, and if I go right here and right click it, and I go to properties, under properties, there should be information here. Yeah, tags. So uh, Windows calls keywords tags, but um, that those tags are visible in this balloons properties section uh, in Windows. In ACDC, we put them under the IPTC key, key, um, field, and we're like I said, we're populating this field using ACDC's functions. Uh, but these are visible to anyone. Um, which is uh, a bit different than the ACDC metadata that we added that, like I said, are proprietary and uh, used uh, to basically catalog these images within ACDC as a software itself. So uh, th these ratings, for example, this rating of five, these tags, um, I don't know if color labels would be universal, but things like these ratings and keywords are considered universal uh, attributes and viewable within not only um, Windows, but they'll also be viewable in other diff other softwares. Um, so some of these uh, these functions are universal, but not all of them. Uh, most of the ACDC metadata itself is uh, internally recognizable, but not otherwise. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Sorry, it's a bit after the fact. Can images be stored and accessed on a server? Um, I've been asked this before, Tom. I think the answer is yes, they can be. Um, I'm a little bit more hazy on this, so I would recommend that you email me with that question uh, so I can get a better answer from our, um, our developers. Uh, thank you, Nola. Take care. Sorry, I had to go. Um, Monica asked, can we finish the presentation? Um, we'll take some questions as we go through. Um, Reese, <laughs> beautiful photo. Alan, yes, it's true. Hard to judge files at thumbnail CS. Yeah, so, and to answer your question again, Alan, uh, you can use, uh, like I said, this little 
this little slider down in the bottom right hand corner to increase the size of a thumbnail or you can use the film strip to change the size of the image that you're working with. Paul asked, a search of my catalog has resulted in 50 plus JPEGs. Can I copy the results of this search to an external drive or folder using the manage mode? Can you copy the results of the, uh, of the search? Hmm, I don't believe so. Let me think. So you wanna take all of those folders. So you've cataloged those images. So let's say, let's go to all of our images with a rating of five. And you wanna take this section here and you want to you want to copy those images. Well, I suppose what you could do is you could literally use this platform to uh, search an external drive. You could take this entire folder if you wanted to copy all of these images, right, and then put them directly onto another um, another hard drive. So if these were images that you liked and you'd cataloged them, there's no reason why you can't copy from here or cut or paste from this section here. Um, so you can you can definitely do that. For example, I could take these three images with have a value of fives and take maybe a couple more from the bottom here. I'm going to select them using the control function. So I select both of these groups. And while I have them selected, I'm just going to click copy. So I'm going to copy them and what I could do is I could create another folder within my pictures section here. So I'm just gonna right click on the pictures folder here, click new folder, and I'm gonna call, let's rename it. I'll rename this to uh, copied images. And if I go into this new folder and paste, you can see that I can paste from that, uh, that result, which contains, looks like those six images. Uh, it also contains some information that should be hidden but it contains those six images from our previous folder. So you can use your catalog to copy and paste between, uh, between folders. Um, Yvonne asked, what is the problem if you click and drag to another folder? There isn't any problems with clicking and dragging to another folder. I can do that. Let's actually do it right now. I'll take this uh, air balloons image and I can drag it to this gemstone. Let's just drag it to saved pictures, for example. And you can see I've moved it here. Um, dragging and dropping is something you're gonna, that's gonna be very relevant when you're working with developments. Um, this is beyond the scope of this workshop, but when you go to make a development to a raw image, um, when you develop that image, meaning that you change like the exposure and the light EQ, and you've changed a, a couple of different uh, variables, that information is saved to something uh, called a sidecar file. And sidecar files exist in ACDC, um, but they're hidden from view. Uh, and the reason why they're hidden is because they're not necessary for people to interact with. Uh, you can unhide them uh, in ACDC. That's something that you can view. But in ACDC, when you have this sidecar file, uh, it's better to interact with that file in ACDC because it preserves that sidecar file alongside it. So if I'd made some developments to this image in develop mode and, uh, and that sidecar file had been created, what I'd want to do is click and move this file within ACDC and not, not move this file using, the, um, using Finder or something like that. And the reason why is because if I use, it, use Finder to move that file, um, that sidecar file won't be preserved in the same location as the file itself. Uh, this 99% of the time, you're never going to interact with this, this function. Um, and so it's totally, uh, it's safe to move your files using Finder. Um, but when you're interacting with raw files that you've developed uh, or files that are not writable, uh, it would be better to move those files, either copy or paste them, or to move them uh, in the actual software itself, just to the desired folder location. And the reason why is it preserves that uh, sidecar file and the changes that you've made in develop mode. That's a bit of a more advanced than what we're talking about today, though. Um, Gary asked, do you rename all photos uh, from DSCN to an actual name? Uh, yeah, so what I do, this is a great question. So in my landscapes folder, 
I have a bunch of different images here that I've gone in and I've manually uh, named. But if I ever wanted to name uh, a variety of folders at the same time, so when I take a you know a, a photo from a like a raw photo, it'll probably look something like this, uh, where I get a uh, let's see here, let's view a folder. Yeah, so there's a bunch of images in here that say DSC and they have a random number associated. These are all those raw images. Well, I can take these images and actually bulk rename them at the same time. So I can take all these images and I could just go to the batch function and I can rename these files. So I'll go to batch up at the top and rename. And this renaming function opens up, which will enable me to go through the process of renaming. Um, renaming is something I've covered in a tutorial in depth uh, on YouTube, but to just showcase what it what it would look like is that if I didn't want to keep the DSC and then the number. All I could do is I could change the templating right here. Uh, so say that I wanted to have a specific name for the shoot. Maybe it was like a Sunday shoot. And then it would I would add, uh, they have these three numbers here. And I know that I've only got like 12 images, so maybe I don't need a third one. So it just goes up to 15 here. So I'd uh, change it to Sunday shoot, and then I would put these number number columns to the right of it. And you'll see what happens is that uh, I have my original name right here with the DSC 07650. And then I have my new name for that file, which is Sunday shoot 01 all the way to 15. Renaming is can be more complicated uh, than uh, than just adding a template name and a number. Uh, you can also insert metadata. You can go through the process of searching and replacing certain uh, things in this case. So I could turn on search and replace, and I could uh, take the word shoot, and I could replace it with the word uh, Sunday afternoon if I wanted to. So you can see that. Uh, it actually changes the name from Sunday shoot to Sunday afternoon and it happens in order. So this is creates a hierarchy and does the templating first, the search and replace second. Uh, if I wanted to change the case, uh, so I could change all the casing to lowercase. So you can see Sunday afternoon changes from uppercase to lowercase. And I could go through and I could actually strip the spaces as my last action. And I could replace spaces with, for example, an underscore. So now my Sunday afternoon is Sunday underscore afternoon underscore zero one. So renaming is a really, 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 really powerful batch function. Uh, and I can go through and create presets uh, based on these functions. So if I like want to rename all of my images at the same time, I would do this and I would maybe create some systems, some presets. So I could call this presets like my afternoon preset. Oops, spell Adam, uh, preset, afternoon preset, hit okay. It saves it as my afternoon preset and then I could rename these and it'll go through and rename all of my files, Sunday underscore afternoon 001 all the way to 15, as you can see here. So Gary, to answer your question, that would be the fastest way to batch rename all of your images. You can also just simply right click and rename any of your image. Richard asked, can you reorganize a keyword list by cut and paste method or with this damage the database? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. I don't know, let's find out. Um, so by cut and paste method, so here's one where, uh, so here we have our ACDC uh, boats image right here. Let's go in and let's add some uh, keywords. Uh, so I'll add all these keywords. Actually, I'll just add these three keywords here. And I'll go back to metadata and you'll see that Brown, Daytime and Zurich are listed. I don't think I can directly interact with this field but what I should be able to do is I can copy, I think directly off of this field into the IPTC field here. So I think I can do that. So I'm, it's, I'm, it's possible to rearrange uh, the IPTC field. And if I go uh, remove brown and put it here, uh, it'll re I can reorganize the order of that. In regards to the order of the actual keywords themselves, um, I think that they are ordered alphabetically, because as you can see here, it lists as Brown, Daytime, and Zurich. Uh, and I, if there was any sub keywords, they would be listed afterwards, because it has to take something that has a hierarchy, and it has to flatten them. 
So, uh, but it looks like Richard, to answer your question, you can copy um, and paste uh, those keywords directly to the IPTC field. But if you're talking about, can I copy and paste with the ACDC keywords? I really don't think there's any need because what you can simply do is go to your image and like unselect a specific keyword uh, and add another one, you know, if that's what you want. If you want to just sort of like uh, remove or add them, you can remove and add them within this function right here, which will change what's listed under the metadata right here. Notice too that when I changed uh, that first uh, keyword, the brown to commercial, uh, commercial pops up here and you'll notice that the IPTC is still the same as the original, which would mean that we would have to run that operation or copy and paste from the ACDC metadata right here to populate the IPTC. Um, but a cut and paste method probably wouldn't be great. Uh, great, I would just recommend utilizing the uh, ACDC metadata tab itself uh, in Organize to add and remove. Uh, Anonymous asked, I have photos scattered on hard drives and computers using XP, Windows 2000, Windows 64, Windows 10 Pro, okay. How do I gather the photos from all of my computers and get them onto an external hard drive and put it in a safe? Is this product suitable for this use? I just wanna uh, find my photos and put them in a central location. So if you have different hard drives uh, and you're, you have access, so basically you've hooked those hard drives up to a single computer, um, uh, you should be able to just move them in ACDC, absolutely. There's no problem. Uh, again, ACDC is working directly off of your hard drive or hard drives in this case. So if you wanna copy and paste or move all of those uh, images from one hard drive to another, you can do so within the software. There's really no difference between you doing that in ACDC and doing it within the finder, as long as you're interacting with hard drives in this case. Um, none of them uh, are filed logically, that's okay. You can do the categorizing, categorizing later. I do photo adjustments in Photoshop on all these computers and want ACDC to find all the file types. Yeah, yeah. Um, when trying to do this manually, it crashes my computer, there are just too many photos. Um, you should be able to navigate to those files provided Again, provided that the you've actually browsed uh, that hard drive, you've you've opened the hard drive on your computer, you're looking within that hard drive, and you're starting the process of browsing uh, and cataloging those images. There's no reason why you can't move those images from one hard drive to another, provided that those hard drives are connected to, to connected to your your computer. In this case, accessible by ACDC. Uh, Kai Oz asked, sometimes you travel to different time zones and forget to change the time on the camera. How can we change it with ACDC in bulk? Whoa, that's a really good question. Um, can you email me, Kai Oz? Because uh, the devs will know how to do that. I've never done it before. Uh, that's a great question, though. Um, and I'd love to know the answer myself. Gary asked, if you want to change from Windows platform to iMac, will all the information still be there? Is there a conversion necessary from one platform to another? So if you're changing to Mac, um, things like ratings, categories, and keywords will be viewable. So we have we do have a Mac product. Um, its development cycle is quite different than our PC product, but the general understanding of keywords, categories, ratings, uh, and labels, and that sort of thing works identically. Um, so some of the information will 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 be present. Uh, I think when it comes to ACDC metadata, all of that information should be viewable from uh, from platform to platform. Uh, Gary, you should you should shoot me an email in regards to this question though, because I just want to double make sure about that. I don't want to send you coursing down to purchasing another product without verifying that. But I would say that all ACDC metadata will be viewable cross platform. Uh, Harris asked, once metadata is embedded, can the photo be used with other editing programs? Once you've embedded the metadata in a file, um, there's no reason why you can't edit the file in another software, but the purpose of embedding metadata within ACDC is to make sure that that information is stored for two reasons. We want to make sure that uh, information is embedded so that we have access to it in the future in the case that our, our database has become corrupted or we've lost our database. The whole purpose of embedding that metadata is so that we can reconstruct that or that it's uh, catalogable in the future. It's something that we can catalog in the future. Um, it 
other softwares, like say, um, you know, Photoshop or some other photo editing software, it's not going to be able to view that embedded ACDC metadata. That ACDC metadata is proprietary to ACDC. ACDC uses it, other softwares don't necessarily use it. Um, the one maybe uh, different, the one difference is I think the rating and label function which are, um, you'll notice when I, I rated this image earlier, when I opened that image in Finder and I opened up the properties tab, uh, there was five stars listed on that image. That's the one thing that I think uh, the star function or the star rating function is viewable in, in Photoshop. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. The, the purpose is that it really, the saving that ACDC metadata is not to the benefit of other problem programs. It's to the benefit of ACDC and things you're doing with ACDC in the future and being able to catalog those files or to reconstruct lost databases and that sort of thing. Art asked, when embedding face metadata, do the names attach to the correct faces or is it necessary to indicate left to right, front to back to keep the names connected with the faces? Um, so we didn't touch too much on face metadata, but let's talk about it quickly because it does relate to a lot of what we've talked about. Uh, and I think to answer your question, Art, is, is that it, uh, it knows where to place it. Um, because when we go in to our face detection folder here, so we've got a bunch of different faces. Let's just work with this woman, Emma, here. Open that up in view. View mode is where we add face information. Okay, so I've gone in and named her Andrea. And uh, the way we see this information is by showing these face outlines. Um, so I can show the face outlines and then I can also make them directly editable by clicking on this tool down at the bottom here. So I could change, pardon me, her name to Emma. And then we can navigate to the next image and I should be able to change this to Emma. And let's see if it, if we get rid of the name uh, I think I'd have to go through and actually get rid of Andrea as a name for it to learn, but that's okay. We'll just go through and add them individually. So if we have M Emma here on all these images and we want to embed this metadata, I just navigate back to manage mode, click on those images, and they have these embed uh, pending flags, which means that we've got a new name saved on these these uh, this photo. I can go to right click and metadata and embed AC Misa metadata and click face data. And I think provided that we are in ACDC, what it should do is it should save that location, uh, basically where we've indicated that the face is on our image. Um, if there's multiple people in the image, it should, uh, it, will, it will know the location of those faces as well. So when embedding ACDC fa face metadata to the names attached to the correct faces, um, I mean, yes, provided that you've made sure that they're in the right location prior to embedding. Uh, and yeah, it should be just fine, Art. Um, embedding metadata works on all file types. Uh, the difference is the uh, writable files, so files that you can write to, the embedded information is written directly to the file. Uh, and in non-writable files, for example, raw files, that information is written to that sidecar file that I mentioned earlier. The sidecar file is that file that contains the developments, that sort of thing. Keith asked, what is the difference between a category and a collection? Can you give examples of their separate uses? I might have to talk about collections in another workshop just because we're also running a bit long, but I did talk a little bit about the differences between categories and keywords today, keywords being um, something that you can view uh, in the properties panel uh, and something that you can move to the IPTC column and something that is visible within this metadata panel here versus the categories which are visible in the cataloging panel um, but not in the actual uh, properties themselves uh, because keywords are something that are, uh, are, are listed here. Um, categories are not default in the program. You can create them. I think that there are some categories that come with the program uh, as like sort of, um, uh, I think, yeah, there might be, yeah, miscellaneous might be one that the people you will start out with. 
There might be people, yeah. But the point is, is that none of these things will be saved in list or listed in your keywords tab here until they're actually attributed to a file. So, and you can also delete or get rid of those uh, default ones at any point. Um, but yeah, I believe ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate comes with a list of uh, uh, of sort of default, I guess, unused uh, um, uh, keywords and categories. Uh, you may uh, may you may use them and then apply them to a, a file. So, for example, in the case of uh, people here, you can see that I, I don't have baby listed under my keywords list, but you can see that it's listed in this quick category here. So, if I was to just apply the word baby to this photo here, you'll see that now it's been added to my keyword list, right? Even if it's unattributed to an image, it's still within the keyword list. So these defaults don't necessarily inform the keyword list until they've been applied to a photo. Uh, Rudy asked, all photos are JPEG. Do the same adjustments that you describe apply to raw images? Um, yeah, everything that we've talked about applies to raw images as well. The difference being that sidecar file that I talked about earlier. Yeah, um, Alex asked, uh, can users add categories relevant to their activities? Absolutely, uh, you can add whatever categories you want. Again, the categories is like totally customizable pan panel with no like, there's no structure to it other than the structure that you create for it. So if you wanted to, if you do a lot of sports photography, for example, literally an activity, you can, uh, you can list a whole bunch of, uh, you know, categories based on uh, that sport. So you could have like an indoor sport main category, a subcategory within that, which is like, um, you know, dodgeball or something like that. You could have an outdoor sport like football, and then you could have keywords that you associate with those sports. For example, your football sports, maybe you do like a lot of, uh, you know, action photography and that sort of thing, and you use specific f-stops and shutter speeds, and maybe you'd apply those specific keywords to your outdoor photography. Uh, hopefully that answers your uh, question. Oh, I see I've answered it already anyway. Um, Ray asked, can you apply keywords categories to a large group of images at once? Yeah. So here I'll just apply the same keyword to every image in this entire folder. So I have a whole folder and they're all people. So let's add a keyword. Uh, let's add a P keyword of people. I'll just create one because it looks like we don't have one in here. I'll just add a new keyword, uh, main top level keyword of keyword uh, of people here, sorry. And then you can see that it's been added here and I'll just click on it to add it to all those images. So now all these images have the keyword of people. You can see the embedded, uh, pending, uh, embedded uh, the pending embed metadata flag comes up. And if I wanted to add a category of uh, to all these images as well, I would simply click all the images I want to have a category for. And uh, oh, you, it looks like I already have a, major category called people here. So I'll just add it as well. And you can see that uh, that has been applied to every image in this folder. So there you go. Um, Stefan asked, is it possible to instruct ACDC to display and make available for editing only metadata fields which are recognized by Windows Explorer? Uh, that's a good question. You might need to email me, Stefan, in regards to that. I will find out with the devs because it's beyond my, um, my understanding. Uh, Owen, thanks, Adam. Always a great training session, work calls, enjoy. Oh yeah, take care. Thank you for uh, hanging hanging in there, Owen. I appreciate it. Um, oh man, there's so many more questions I haven't had a chance to get to. Um, thank you, Art. Uh, Harris, to answer your question, can this workshop be reviewed again online? Yes, it'll be on our YouTube page within the next uh, couple couple days. Uh, Keith, shame you can't cover my question on collections. It was missing from an earlier YouTube on the manage mode. Yes, I do need to do a tutorial on collections actually. Uh, so Keith, I'm gonna write that down. Um, I think it'd be better suited to tutorial anyway. It's not a, there's not a ton of content in regards to collections, smart collections, that sort of thing. Um, but it, yeah, we will definitely cover it. Um, Alan, you could probably number in, yeah, yeah. Um, I might have a look at some of these questions and answer them as best I can 
over text. There's so many more questions than I ever could have uh, handled in this workshop. I do believe I need to close it up now because we've almost ran about uh, an hour and a half here. But I see that there's a lot of unanswered questions here. Uh, I'd like to get to these. So I, I would really hope that uh, people, if, if you have a question that I wasn't able to get to, can you please send me an email? Uh, I do want to have, I do want to get to answers for all of these. I'm going to try to, um, try to, uh, see if I can get to any question, quick, quick ones here. Um, but yes, I'm just going to fire my email once again into the, uh, the chat because I, I do want to answer these. It's just some of them are more complicated than I have time for. Um, um, but yeah, that's, that's it for today. We covered basically, um, we covered the, the general layout uh, uh, within manage mode, we covered rearranging the layout. Uh, we talked about cataloging files, whether it be through tags, ratings, labels, and uh, categories and keywords. We also talked about how to see what uh, you know changes have been made to an image using these icons, uh, whether it be the categories, the pending metadata icon, or the uh, labels and the ratings and tags, that sort of thing. So we talked about the actual thumbnail property itself. Um, yeah, we talked about uh, filtering using the filter function and using the actual catalog function to catalog and view files now that you have some sort of information stored on them, some cataloging information stored. Um, yeah, uh, we talked a little bit about batch renaming. I really wanted to talk about uh, batch uh, renaming, uh, sorry, batch development and, uh, and actions today. But uh, just given how much uh, we had to cover, it just wasn't in the cards. So we'll have to talk about that in a future workshop. And, uh, and I've made a note uh, in regards to uh, an early, uh, somebody's question to cover uh, collections. And I should probably cover that in a tutorial because it'd be suited to that medium. Um, but thanks for everybody uh, for participating. I'm going to mute my mic now, uh, but I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can via type. Um, just in the question and answer panel, anything that I wasn't able to get to. And like I said, uh, if you have an urgent question or a question you want to know the answer to that I wasn't able to get to, please email me. I'm very available on, on over email to, to answer any questions there. So I apologize if I wasn't able to get to your question. Uh, thanks for everybody's patience today covering, covering manage mode. Um, so I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. And just a reminder that this will be up on our YouTube page in the next couple of days. So. Take care.